just in the last hour, I've started to see quite a bit of cloud cover develop on the west side of town, and those clouds will move over the area first. So we're going to start the first alert weather day shortly here after 1 p.m. for the widespread thunderstorms that will develop through the afternoon. Some of these storms will be capable of producing two inches of rain in less than an hour. It could be just 30 to 45 minutes in some cases where we could get that much rain, and that's too much rain for the ground to absorb. In that amount of time. That's where we're concerned about the flooding, especially over our burn scars in the mountains from wildfires over recent years like Cameron Peak and East Troublesome and Grizzly Creek. Of course, that's the burn scar uh, above Glenwood Canyon that sometimes closes I 70 through that stretch. Calwood and Williams Fork as well. All of these burn scars have an elevated threat for flash flooding if a thunderstorm were to move directly over them. In just the short uh, last 30 minutes or so, we're starting to see some storms develop in Summit County over toward Highway 285 as well. Most of us are still dry. Most of us have had very little cloud cover so far, with the exception being northern Colorado. And those extra clouds you've had since daybreak this morning around Fort Collins, Loveland and Greeley, those clouds should probably prevent you from getting much if any flooding activity in northern Colorado. In fact, areas up north may not even get nearly as much rain as we're going to get in Metro Denver. And the heaviest rain is going to be on the south and west sides of town, especially Highlands Ranch, Lone Tree, Parker and areas farther south, southeast Aurora, and then over toward Places like Littleton and King Carroll Ranch, maybe even up toward Golden. That's where some of the heaviest rain will be. As we get into the uh, later evening hours, 7 p.m. or later, we're going to watch these storms on the eastern plains because a few of them could turn severe with some strong wind. We're not anticipating any damaging wind at this time in the metro area, but farther east, that could be an issue. Our primary concern for Metro Denver and especially areas south and west is the flash flood uh, threat. And a flash flood watch goes through midnight tonight. As I mentioned, in addition to the flooding concern, there is that small chance for some wind up to around 60 miles per hour, strong enough to do some damage. So in addition to flash flood warnings in Colorado, there could be a severe thunderstorm warning or two, again, primarily out on the eastern plains. It's already 82 degrees at DIA. We're not going to get much warmer than we are right now. We'll top out in the mid to upper 80s, not as hot as it was over the weekend. Uh, I do want to mention that in southeast Colorado, it will be a little bit warmer. We will still see 90s there, but look at the map for tomorrow. We get rid of the 90s across the eastern plains and Virtually the entire state of Colorado will be below normal tomorrow with 60s, 70s and 80s. We may get a 90 degree temperature near Dinosaur and Rangeley, but that would be the only 90 degree heat in the state for Tuesday. After that, temperatures do start warming back up a little bit. 86 on Wednesday, closer to 90 on Thursday and mid 80s on Friday. After today's excellent chance for rain, especially from Denver south and west, we're going to see those rain chances decrease tomorrow, Michelle, to 30%. And then a 20% chance Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. For the weekend, we boost the chances back up to 40%. Only 79 degrees in Denver on Saturday. I'll slide the days over here on the First Alert Super 7-Day Forecast. You can get a little sneak peek of early next week with those continued chances for late-day storms. All right, Ashton, thank you.